What is up everybody? Today we are going to be going over how to make a fireball in Blender that you can then hold in your hand with uh, the magic of compositing. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we're going to do is just go ahead and select our entire scene and hit X and delete. The next thing that we're going to do is hit Shift A and come down and grab an icosphere. Now we're going to use this icosphere in order to create our fire. Go ahead and select the icosphere and then come up here to Object, Quick Effects, and Quick Smoke. And that will just create some different stuff for us. The first thing is this domain right here. Uh, and then it also adds in the particle systems that we need both to the domain and our icosphere. So with our domain selected, let's go ahead and come down here to the uh, the physics properties and for me my final render I actually set this to 128 uh, which is a little bit high so I'm gonna set this to 32 and then when things are finally ready to be finally rendered I'm gonna switch this to 128 then we'll come down here let's go ahead and click on adaptive domain and I'm gonna just add resolution here and change that to 2 next as we come down in the fire tab in the fire tab I'm gonna change the reaction speed to 0.4 and then the veracity to 1 the temperature maximum I'm going to leave all of that as is and honestly that's all we really need to do for our domain now let's go ahead and select our icosphere and I'm gonna change the flow type to fire instead of um, fire and smoke and then beyond that actually that's all you really need to do the for for all of those settings but your domain actually makes it so that you can uh, see the fire and so because of that if we go ahead and pull up our timeline here and change that into a shader editor we actually have this principled volume shader and we do need to change some stuff here. The first thing I'm going to do is take the density down to zero. And then I'm going to take the black body intensity up to a value of two. And then the temperature I'm going to change from 1000 to 1500. And there you go. That's our fire is all set up and ready to go. Now let's go ahead and change our shader editor back to our timeline and set the start frame at 1 and the end frame at 180. Oh, and that's the other thing that I did forget to do is if I go ahead and grab my domain here and come down to the cache settings, uh, I'm going to set my frame start to 11 and my frame end to 175 because I know that the footage that I'm using requires that. Your footage may require a different start and end. So now we have all of this set up and ready to go, which is perfect. Let's go ahead and bring in our footage. I'm gonna to change to this modeling tab and I'm just gonna change the name from modeling to tracking. I know I could come here and open one up, but I like to set up my windows a little bit differently. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is come here to the movie clip editor and then I'm going to just navigate to my footage. Okay, so now I have my footage and I'm going to change my frame rate to 29.97 because I know that that's what my frame rate for that video was. And I'm going to hit P on my keyboard to prefetch all of the frames. You can see that happening here at the bottom. Now if I hit the space bar on my computer, you can watch the video. Bam, just like that. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and track my hand so that the fireball will be tracked to my palm. So I want to choose a place on my hand that stays in the frame the whole time and also that has enough contrast to be useful. So I'm going to choose this point right here and I'm just going to hit control left click to put in a tracking point and I'm going to scale it up. And then instead of coming here to the track menu and hitting the automatic track, I'm just going to hold down alt and left uh, arrow key on my keyboard. And you can see right there, I jumped, it jumped and it shouldn't have. So I'm going to just go ahead and grab this and move it back. 
and then just alt left key and keep going and blender does a fairly good job oops there's another one fairly good job of holding on to the feature that you choose and I'm just alt left arrow and I'm just hitting G on my keyboard to move the tracker when it loses where the track is supposed to be and that track is about good so I'm gonna just gonna go ahead and go back to my starting point which was here in the middle of the footage and then I'm just gonna hold down alt and hit the right arrow key in order to track forward oops there I jumped again and every time it jumps I just go ahead and hit go to that frame where it jumped and just hit G on my keyboard move my tracker to where it should be and then alt right mouse button and it'll it'll retrack over what it tracked before. All right, and uh, I think that's good. So now that we have this track, I'm gonna come here to the solve menu. If you don't see this menu, you can hit T on your keyboard. By the way, so hit T, come here to the solve menu, and then here in geometry, click link empty to track. Now, if we go back to our layout, you can see that there's an empty there. Let's go ahead and hit Shift A and come down here to camera and put a camera into our scene. I'm just going to hit N on my keyboard, come up here to item and I'm gonna zero out the rotation. And now if I hit three on my keyboard, I can just hit R and rotate this up and G and just pull this back a little bit. And you can see that now that we have a camera in our scene, actually, our little marker there goes ahead and moves. So now, let me hit zero on the number pad in order to go into the camera view. Let's uh, come into the camera options here in the properties panel. Come down to background images, add image, and then click open and go ahead and navigate to our plate here and open that up and change the source from single image to image sequence. And for frames, let's go ahead and put 180 frames. And now we have our video behind us. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do one more thing, which is Shift A and add in a mesh plane. And now we can go ahead and put our camera in the correct orientation. So let's change our transformation privet to the 3D cursor. Let's make sure that our cursor is at the world origin by hitting Shift S and then going to Cursor to World Origin. And then let's go ahead and select our camera and hit R and X and rotate that up. And then R and Z and rotate it around until this seems about right. Now, one thing I do know is that this focal length is wrong. Since I was shooting this on my phone, I know that the focal length on my phone is at 27 millimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and just change that. And let me just scale this up a little bit. Grab this here and hit G and X. And then uh, R and X. And we'll just rotate this up until... I'm just using this plane and I'm looking at the lines here in the sidewalk to kind of align everything. Okay, and then we can hit X and delete that plane. Last but not least, let's go ahead and grab our icosphere and then shift select this, uh, this empty here and then just hit control P and I'm just going to say object keep transform and that'll parent our icosphere so that it moves along with everything. So now we have our fireball at the same uh, level with our hand, or moving at the same time with our hand. So now I'm going to select the smoke domain and I'm going to come back to the physics tab and I'm going to look. I see I started on frame 11. So I'm going to go to frame 11 and I'm going to actually move. I want this to be more in the, the middle of my hand. So I'm gonna hit G and X, I'm gonna move this over. And I know that I want this uh, fireball to kind of grow in size. So I'm gonna go ahead and 
with it at its normal size right here, hit I, and put in a keyframe for scale. And then I'm going to go back, well actually I'm going to go back just one frame and hit S and 0, and I'm going to put that scale to 0, and then hit I and add in a new keyframe. Now of course, of course, having just two keyframes that are one frame apart is a little too fast. So I'm going to leave my initial keyframe there and then I'm just going to grab that second keyframe, hit G and go ahead and move that out a couple of keyframes so that it grows. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, now let me go and see, select the domain. Our end frame is 175, so let me go to 175. So at, at 176, my scale needs to be zero. So at 175, I'm going to add in a keyframe, a scale keyframe. 176, I'm going to just hit S and zero. And oh, that's that's my problem. I need to actually change my box bounding back to bounding box center. And now if I hit S and zero, that's right. I and scale. And then we go forward or backward, maybe five couple of frames there. And just grab this uh, keyframe where my fireball is at one. And then hit G and move that back. Okay. So the last thing that we have to do before we start getting into rendering is we just have to come and grab our domain. Go ahead and just move our domain so that it encompasses our fireball there. Just scale it up a little bit. Okay. I like that. So let's go ahead, change the resolution up to 128. And then I'm going to come down here and change in the cache settings, this type, I'm going to change it to modular. And what that will do is up here, it'll give me this bake data. And I'm just going to go ahead and bake this data real quick. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're all staying safe out there and I will see you next time.